T first glance, President Donald Trump and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, both thin-skinned egotists, seem like unlikely allies. I was convinced the two would have a falling out eventually, whether it be over a minor slight or something more consequential like a Trump peace plan. But it turns out I was dead wrong. When Trump and Netanyahu sit down for their third meeting at the White House on Monday, it promises to be a veritable love fest of virtual Vulcan mind meld with both leaders in sync on everything from Iran to Syria to the importance of catering to Saudi Arabia. Netanyahu's dependence on Trump is easy to explain. All Israeli prime ministers are judged by their ability to maintain strong ties with the United States. And Netanyahu is particularly desperate for Trump's endorsement. He faces the threat of indictment in connection to three corruption cases, although Netanyahu denies any wrongdoing and insists the prosecution was politically motivated. And with little more than two weeks before Israel's election, Netanyahu faces the most serious opponents of his career Benny Gantz and Yair Lapid, two centrists who have teamed up in a formidable challenge. He desperately needs Trump's endorsement to build up his image as an indispensable man the only Israeli politician who can manage Washington and the U.S. president. But what explains Trump's deep attachment and extraordinary commitment to both Israel and Netanyahu? For Trump, going above and beyond with a pro-Israel agenda is great politics it's an easy way to distinguish himself from former President Barack Obama and win points among key constituencies in the United States. And by fundamentally changing U.S. policy, whether rightly or wrongly Trump gets an easy ride into the history books. Trump has long considered himself a close friend of Israel and a champion of the Jewish state. In 2013, Trump actually filmed a campaign commercial for Benjamin Netanyahu. He later boasted about his role as Grand Marshal of New York Salute to Israel Parade in 2004 and consistently described himself as a friend to Israel during the 2016 presidential campaign. His son-in-law Jared Kushner, who is the lead architect of Trump's Middle East peace plan, has clearly played an influential role in the Trump-Israel relationship as well. While Trump initially suggested he'd remain neutral in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, he ratcheted up his commitment to Israel later on in the campaign. After a meeting with Netanyahu in September 2016, the Trump campaign issued a statement that said peace was possible only when Palestinians renounce hatred and violence and accept Israel as a Jewish state. What really crystallized Trump's pro-Israeli image was the way he positioned himself in opposition to President Barack Obama, who he said may be the worst thing to ever happen to Israel. Trump also hammered away at the Iran nuclear deal, which he repeatedly described as the worst agreement in history. That his first foreign trip as president included Israel only highlighted his commitment 